Good day guys, uh, I am Mr. Hadi and today we are going to take a look at ANOVA One Way and ANOVA Two Ways video lectures. Uh, the reason this video recording is done because on or in week two there will be a holiday on Monday and therefore our class is officially cancelled. Uh, you will see my recordings here uh, in a way of picture in picture mode. The small video will be myself and the larger video will be the slides that you have on time. Right, so uh, speaking about times, uh, the lecture files are on times as shown here. So I open my times page. It is uh, the lecture to computing and over one way and two ways. So open it in a tab. All right, open a new tab. So this will be your uh, notes that you are going to use while watching this video. Uh, this video will be in two sections, namely Lecture 2.1 ANOVA 1 Way and Lecture 2.2 ANOVA 2 Ways. So please watch these videos before going to tutorial sessions uh, in week number two. The annotated files or the one that I'm commented on the slides uh, will be also available on time so you can download them if you, so, uh, if you choose to see them as well. All right. Let's go back to times and make sure you have your statistic table as well. Open in a new tab and also the familiar sheet open in a new tab. So you need these two files uh, for reference uh, for ANOVA 1 way and 2 ways. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to use my own software which is this one because I need to make notes using the pen okay so let's begin all right so welcome to my class this will be uh, lecture 2.1 on our one way computing application for engineers uh, this is me of course you've seen this uh, slide before and we have these uh, four sub chapters or subtopics. The first one will be okay, let me make an annotation in red color. The first one will be introduction to ANOVA. And the second one is some of the assumptions used in ANOVA, right? So these are the theory part where the dry part is. So I'm gonna skip a few of these slides on this section. Uh, because I'm going to go straight to ANOVA one way afterwards and then I'm going to stop the video and then we'll have your ANOVA two ways uh, on the following lecture 2.2 right okay good okay here is the question what if you have two tests right on oh, sorry two columns or two groups uh, the one that we have seen in the previous uh, week whereby you have two groups mu1 and mu2 and with these two groups your hypothesis will be h0 mu1 mu2 h1 is mu1 not equal to mu2 when you have two samples like I have shown you in the tutorial session now with these two groups you will have either Z test or T test. And of course, for Z test, variance or standard deviation are given. While for T test, you have to calculate yourself your variance and standard deviation. All right. Now, here is another question. What if you have four, three or four and you know more groups that you are talking or you are collecting data for example in this slide I've shown you you have mu1, mu2, mu3 and mu more mu1 means you have more than three so if you want to do either z test or t test it will be very cumbersome why? let me show you if you want to do a two test for these groups you have to do mu1, mu2 either equals or not equal to mu1 mu3 mu1 to mu infinity 
which is utterly impossible to do in a short period of time. Yes, you can do it, but for a short period of time, it's impossible. Right, so let me clear it up. So the best way to do is, to do this, you are going to be in, uh, introduced to ANOVA one way, or ANOVA two ways. In this case, it's ANOVA one way. So here it says, what if you uh, there are more than two factors of all levels or more than the group of levels level means you have this three and more so on and so forth right so these are levels that we're talking about all right let me clear this up on the next page let's go to the next page uh it's what i've said just now z test and t test is not directly applied to this problem when you have more than two groups or more than two levels or more than two factors the more calculation that you need you uh, that means t test and z test is utterly impossible uh, what you will see here is the ANOVA or we see here the analysis of variance analysis of variance that's why we call it ANOVA is the appropriate analysis to test these experiments the ANOVA is developed by Dr. Fisher in the early 20s because at this, at this time, agricultural development is very booming in the US. So they start to have there's a better way to do rather than do a uh, do tedious job in T-tests and Z-tests. So that's why ANOVA one way or two ways or more than actually, we have more than one or two ways. You can have seven ways if you like uh, that, uh, that used when you have more than two groups. Right, so for this case, when you see Z0, that means you are calculating for Z test, T0 when you are calculating for T test, so from this ANOVA, you will see F0, whereby F0 is for ANOVA one way or two ways or any ways. So F stands for Fisher, of course, and you will, uh, we will refer this F0 to the table, and then you say hypothesis is accepted or rejected, either H1. O H zero. Right. Next slide. It's a blank, black space because actually there's a video. Now it's about a cotton video because since this is a recording video, it's on YouTube. Uh, so I may just skip it. So the next slide is this. Now this is my dearest friend in the whole world. Uh, I'm a fan of her. Uh, I'm not, not sure you know her, uh, because you are, you are born a bit late rather than I am. So this is Miss Kathy Perry. And of course, you know her as a singer, singer, but actually she's not. She's actually an engineer. You are a bunch of stereotypes, you guys. So his, her name is Katie, of course. And this time, she's actually a cotton engineer. That's why you never see her around anymore singing. Because she's busy doing engineering works. Like you do. Anyways, she's a cotton engineer. What she has is a feel of cottons. There you can see on the slides that. Cottons of feel, oh, sorry. Fields of cotton, miles and acres and acres. So what she do with these cottons is to make shirt. So these are two examples of shirts, plate shirts that she used the cotton uh, for. So here she says, we make cotton shirts, apparently. Okay, now the case study looks something like this. Let me choose a pen. Uh, we want to test... Um, if the difference of cotton percentage in a shirt makes the shirt strength difference, that means the more cotton that you have, what we? The more cotton that you have, the stronger the shirt it will be. So therefore, that's our hypothesis. That means the more cotton you have, the more strength it will be. So here on this page, you see the percentage on this side, right? And you see. Uh, shirts laid out on this side. Alright, this percentage will be our. Oh, sorry. Weight of cotton. Mm -hmm. So here you have 15%, 20% uh, of cotton, 25, 30, and 35 cotton. So we increase the percentage of cotton in a shirt. So whereby uh, cotton may be mixed with something else, maybe polyester or linen, to make a stronger shirt. 
So cotton is used because cotton is generally a cooling cloth. So it's good to wear cotton uh, other than like this super dry cloth. Yeah? Right, so these are the weight of cotton in percentage. So for each of these weight, as you can see, like that, we have five repetition. So in ANOVA, of course, in any measurement, you need to repeat and make average. So in this case, you have five different weight percentage of cotton and five repetition for each of these weight of per percentage of cotton. All right. Now, let's go to the next slide. What does this mean? Now, in T test and Z test, I teach you the sigma symbol and it stands for variance. But in this case, we I have to introduce to you guys uh, to a few more terms and symbols. Here you can see, let me enlarge this. You have the first thing is A. A here stands for level. So there are five levels of factor, meaning the weight percentage. We have five levels. 15%, 20, 25, 30, 35. That means five levels. Five levels of the factor. What is the factor? The factor is the weight. Right? That means another one is you have five replicates. Here the symbol will be N. Right? N. Not, uh, this is N, not pi. N stands for replicates. So therefore, A, which is the level, times N, which is the replicates, will be big N. And here is 25. That means, of course, 25 comes from 5 levels and 5 repetition. 5 times 5, 25. And we call it runs or samples. Uh, these two now are the extra part. Uh, the runs should be uh, in random order whereby you cannot, when you do the experiment, maybe you test it, you stretch it, you break it, you cannot choose this, the first one. The first one, and the second one, and the third one. No, you cannot do it. You must make random choices. For example, I choose the red pen now. The first experiment, I choose this one, which is, what's this? Uh, 15, 20, 25% of cotton. And then and I choose this one, then I choose this one, so on and so forth, until all samples are taken. Okay, next page. Now, to have a shortcut, these are the experimental number. I name it, I number it from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is for easy numbering uh, and for easy tabling. So from this number, we choose one and do the experiment. In the final exam, you don't have to write these down. Okay, these are just for experimental or teaching purpose. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, summary of the case study just now. So our, our hypothesis would be this one. Strength affect the weight by the weight percent of cotton used in the blend of material for the fiber of the cotton shirts. So we have again here five levels and five repetitions. So you have 25 runs. Okay. Next slide. Okay, in this slide, uh, it says here, uh, the first, she chose the eight sample to be the first experiment. So, which, where is it? So, this is the one. So, she choose eight and she go on until the, all the random order. So, when you do your final year project or any project that uses ANOVA, you can use these methods. Right? List them down and then... Uh, in random order, just pick them up sort of like a bingo scorecard. So take one, okay, I've done number 25. Take one, I've done number 20. Take one, I've done number 2. Until all or the list is done. Alright? So this is how we do it. Okay. Um, technically, without the hand calculation and uh, calculator, uh, you can use this software. So this software is called the SPSS software, which is used uh, for uh, dealing statistic analysis. Another software that you can download for free for one month, which is called the Design Expert. 
So you just Google this and you can see that you can use this for one month and then if you like to use it. Lah. And of course, in our case, use hand calculation. Okay, now these are the results. This one, let me enlarge it. Once you have taken all these samples and do the tensile science experiment, you get these results. The results here is or are the observation, right? And it is this unit, pound per square inch. Do you know why is it in English? Because Cathy is from America. Go figure. Anyways, so these are the results. For example, for 15% of cotton, right? Uh, she do the experiment, so she get seven. The first uh, repetition, seven pound per square inch. The next one is seven pounds per square inch, and fifty, so on and so forth. Until the last specimen, it is eleven pound per square inch. Okay, let's do the calculation. First step is to let me reduce the size to do this total. I'm gonna write here step number one. And step number two, do the average. You'll get marks in the final exam for these, right? So this 49 comes from, let me reduce the size even more. This 49 comes from the total of these repetition. This 77 comes from the repeat, uh, submission of these repetition. 88 from this, 108 from these. And finally, you have 54 comes from the last 35 percentage cotton, right? So the one here below here, I'm going to change the color now to maybe yellow and maybe make bigger point. So this 376 is the submission of all the totals of these data, right? And these averages, this one, 9.8 comes from 49 divided by 5. Why? 5 repetition. 15.4 is, is 77 divided by 5, so on and so forth. And finally, you will see that this 15.04 is the summation of all the average. You will see why we take this data, yeah? why it is important to take this data. So I'm going to leave this be for your reference. Okay, now before I continue, um, I would like to show you that there is a box plot or graphical analysis called box plots. We have seen this before, I believe so. Right? This is an engineering analysis. So what you see here, I'm going back to blue, see here that the 30th cotton percentage have the highest amount of strength. That means anytime you take 30% of cotton uh, percentage, you're good to go. There's no need to do any statistical analysis. But again, I would like to remind you why we do statistical analysis because we want to be efficient or cost efficient. We want to know if there is other ways to cut costs. Reason being, the higher the percentage cotton, the higher cost that you put inside these shirts. If you can reduce the number of weight percentage, that means you can reduce some of the cost, where it, which is the cotton cost. All right. Uh, so you can see here, fifteen percent and thirty-five percent have the least amount of strength, while these two is somewhere in the middle. Okay. Another way to see this is using uh, this one, the dot diagram. The dot diagram also shows the same thing. 30% will be the best and the least amount will be maybe 15 and 35%. So how about if we introduce a statistical way to see a cost analysis, uh, which one of these weight percentage is actually better okay now uh, let me clear this up because I need to show you one thing let's say that we have these data let me enlarge it so we have 15% 20% 25% 30% and 35% how many groups do we have excellent fine you have mu1 mu2, mu3, mu4, mu5 and to do this experiment using t-test of course it's t-test because you don't know what is the outcome mu1 mu2 mu1 mu3 mu1 mu4 
mu1, mu5, mu2, mu3, blah, blah, blah. You do the factorial, you know that is too much. So n over one way, or the analysis of variance, is a study to see the variance of all these groups and see if these variance from group 15 is the same variance of group 20 or 25, 30 or 35. I do hope that you still remember what variance I'm talking about. I'm going to use this color now. This is group mu1, right? Mu1. Oh, too bad. It's too big. Mu1. I'm going to change the color now to blue. Mu2 will be superimposed on top. Mu2. Change color to this one. Mu3. And change color to this one. Uh, no, it's the same red. Uh, black. Mu4. And change color to the last one. Maybe dark blue. Mu5. This means all mu's are the same. All groups are the same. It doesn't matter what cotton percentage that you take. The strength results are always the same. If one of them is different, therefore, one of these groups is better or not better or worse compared to the other one. Right? So that means it's either mu1 different or mu2 different or mu2 different. So the hypothesis will be this hypothesis would be shown later. Sorry. Okay, so let's do this F test distribution. Uh, here you see that we have uh, five level, all right? And figure this one out. If we do T test, we're going to conduct type one error, which is taking something uh, that we should not have, right? So we have uh, a lot of error that you are going to see. So figure this one out. Okay, so let's go first to the assumption of ANOVA. First things first is, is this. Let me just skip through these slides. Oh, I cannot skip through this one. Beg your pardon. I'm going to stick to this slide. Okay, so that means all the groups should have these hypotheses. I'm going to write it down here. So you can use this later on. So H0 means... All means are the same, right? Sorry. Mu1, Mu2, Mu3, Mu4, and Mu5. In uh, ANOVA one way or two ways, H1 means at least one Mu is different. That is our hypothesis. In our calculation, I will explain in the tutorial as well. All measurement must have error. So in the in the in the uh, ANOVA one way, you will see that this uh, calculation have total, the treatment and error. So to do this, you will have these uh, equations. I'm going to skip through to this slide. These are the formulas that you will see in the final exam. So if I'm going to show you my Chrome, Google Chrome, give me a minute. All right, is it this one? No, is it this one? Yes. On the second page, you will see that you have the equations for ANOVA one way. You'll see this in your tests and your final exams and also in your receipt exams. Let's go back here. So here is the between treatment. This one, between treatment, this is the error and this is the total. So you need to calculate one by one. As you can see here, there are all mathematic symbols here and there. So I have to show you what these means. So we are going to use, not this one, we are going to use, use the, case, the case study just now to make things easy for you to understand. So how many calculations do you need now compared to T-test? T-test, you need to calculate the variance for both of the groups and then you need to calculate the variance for the combined group and then the T0, more or less four calculation. For ANOVA one way, unfortunately, unfortunately, you have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if I'm very generous, you'll get nine marks in final exam. If I'm not, 
I don't know, one mark. Anyways, an F test or ANOVA one way, you are still looking at the degree of freedom. Why? Because F test or ANOVA test is a sample from the T test. So you're still looking at the degree of freedom and the degree of freedom is what you are going to refer on the table and the statistic table. Okay, so let's go straight to ANOVA 1. So this is our final subchapter uh, and the clock there is 23, 25 minutes uh, uh, through. Okay, so again, this is the ANOVA, ANOVA one way example. First, you need to calculate the totals, number one, number two, calculate the average, number three, make sure you got the grand total, y dot dot there stands for grand total, y double dot dot bar, y double dot bar there stands for grand total for average. Okay, make sure you get these four first, it's very very important. Now, here is the fun part. These are the equations that you see on the statistic table. So if I can do like this, bring it here. Oh, can I do that? All right, good, I can do that. Okay, so here are the equation for treatment, total, and error, as you can see there. Oops. So I'm going to explain to you what these symbols means and how do we add up all this. So make sure you uh, focus on this light. Now, I'm going to take the blue, light blue color. Let's go for the SST first. SST, sorry. SST stands for total. SS, total. SS stands for sum of square right sum of square let me make a note here lah. sum of squares what does squares means actually square stands for variance it's a square right so this is the analysis of variance so n over one way is the sum of squares sum of variance Go figure. Alright. So, let's go to this one. SST. On the... Let me slide back in. So, you can see here on the statistic table, SS total down there. Right? Originally. So, I cannot draw on this because uh, this is not the part of the PDF. Uh, take a look at the SST there on the slide note. Uh, there's a submission from I to 1, that means the first number, until A, that means all the levels. A stands for level. And J until 1, uh, uh, sum, sum it until all the N. N means repetition. So I and J, why I and J? Let's go back to these slides before. Now here, take a look at this. Somehow, the statistician take all rows that going downwards is like a y graph x and y graph so the one that goes to the rows is the x graph technically if you learn the vector the vector for x axis is i the vectors for y axis is j okay j all right uh that's for that's why we go for i and j so what we do is let me go back to the next slide is it okay we need to do is from the first number the first number to five levels 15 20 25 30 35 and the first number of repetition until all the repetitions are done here it is y i j squared y again is the observation therefore y observation from i and j all of them you have to square them minus Y grain total, the one that you have uh, summed just now, you have to square that, and the whole total runs, which is 25. As you can see here, I'm going to change the color now to green. 7 squared plus 7 squared plus 16 squared, and of course, I'm going to allow you to use this dot dot dot, 
and the last one is 15 square and 11 square and this one is the total just now that you have sum it 376 square divided by 25 where does this 7 7 15 and this 15 comes from go back to the previous slide from here you see that 7 square plus 7 square plus 15 square plus 11 square plus 9 square plus 12 plus 17 square plus 12 square plus 18 square so on blah 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 until 15 square and 11 square unfortunately you have to use your calculator please punch your calculator correctly don't rush because if you make mistakes it's not easy to get back and detect where you did the mistakes from okay that is for sst and you got red pen 636.96 okay ss treatment that means between the levels i don't know why you call treatment but it's for between of levels blue ink so here n stands for number of repetition i let's go back to the treatment if you see there the slide notes there one over n from i to uh, from the first number to a right so that means you have five levels and just i dot that means the summation of i dot which are the one that you have sum all the rows there minus the grand total square minus the the whole summation square you have one over five and 49 and 54 where do we get this from from here there sorry 49 sorry 49 square 77 square plus 88 square plus 108 square plus 54 square so that is for the between the level so that that is ss treatment or ss level okay once you got this this is your results in a blue and a red font 475.76 and finally ss E stands for SS error. Sum of square of error. Whatever you get from SST minus whatever you get from SS treatment, and you got this answer. 161.2. Now, notes. Compulsory. I'm going to write here in blue ink. Okay. All results for f test must be positive posi sorry tif sorry okay it must be positive it cannot be other than positive or negative you can see here all the results are positive 636.96 475.76 and the last one the error ss error 161.2 all must be positive if it's negative recalculate scrunch your paper and then redo the calculation okay so that is the sum of square all right so next part after sum of square is the degree of freedom you can see here the degree of freedom for SS treatment or level is A minus 1. What is A? A is the level. 5 levels minus 1 become 4. And for SS error, there, big N or capital N minus A, that means 25 minus A, uh, 5, that means you have 20. And this is to be put in the MS treatment. What is MS? MS here stands for blue color. <clears throat> mean square right the mean of the squares that you get and you can see here this is the degree of freedom a minus one for the treatment a in the bracket n minus one or a times n is actually big n right and this is actually a n minus a so this is actually n minus a mathematics lah i know you know mathematics okay okay 
Oh my god, sorry, sorry, my bad. Okay. Right, so whatever you get from SSE, you divide by the degree of freedom of A minus 1, uh, SS treatment, sorry, and for MSE, mean square error, is SSE divide by A and minus 1. Okay, whatever you get, sorry, whatever you get between these two, like this, you can see there. For MS treatment, red color, it is 11894. MSE is 8.06. Again, all must be positive and must not be negative. The final calculation will be F0, which whereby you have to refer to the table afterwards. MS treatment divided by MS error. So you will have, sorry, MS treatment divided by MS error. This is your F0 results, 14.76. Okay, 14.76. Let's go and see the table. Now, in the table, the results will be laid down as such. F alpha V1 V2. So, alpha stands for the significant level. V1 is the degree of freedom of level... V2 stands for degree of freedom of error. In this case, it is alpha 4, 2, 20. Where do we get 4 and 20? This is from A minus 1. This one for big A minus A. From the one that we have calculated just now. Okay? So 4 and 20. So what we should do with this, let's say alpha is, what is our alpha there? 0 0.05 or 5%. So we need to take a look at the statistic table. Okay, statistic tables are in my uh, Google Chrome. I'm going to scroll down to page number 3. So welcome to statistic table for FTAS. Here on page 3, table A.3 is for F distribution or Fisher distribution or ANOVA. Both, one way, two ways. For five significant levels. See that, right, on the, on the screen. It goes for two pages. The next is for 1% or 0 0.01. And the final one, two pages, 0 0.1, which means 0 0.001%. Yeah, 0 0.001 or 0 0.01. Okay, you do the math. Right, so we have 3 alpha for F test. Congratulations. So for the sake of uh, simplification, in our case, we are going to see and take a look at 5%. Now, here on the left, take a look, I cannot scribble here. V1 and V2 is on the table. V1 stands for the degree of freedom of level. V2 is the degree of freedom of error. So our degree of freedom of level is 4. Degree of freedom of error is 20. So do the correlation there. 3, uh, 4 and 20. Down there is 2.87. Can you see? V1, 4. V2, 20. 2.87. So that's how you get 2.87. Let's go back to our slides. The result there is, can you see, 2.87. And our results just now is 14, right? 14. 14.76 14 is bigger than 2.87. That means null hypothesis is rejected or H1 is accepted. What this means again, either one of these strength, cotton uh, weight percentage, is stronger than the other one. So now, we need to locate which one is actually stronger. Right, so you can lay down all your results in a table like this one, right, for easier for me to see, right? And again, this one, no need to take a look because this is for my other class, okay? Uh, for the P, the P is for the probability, okay? So again, H1 is accepted. Now, take a look at this distribution. You have seen this graph before. For F test, 
is always on the positive side you can see that it's always on the positive side and this is for five percent this is for one percent and somewhere here one percent there and our f0 is way way far from the from the mean this means ANOVA one way is is prone to have h1 except you will go very far on the distribution graph so this is what it means in a distribution graph point of view okay now because h1 is accept now this is very important Let, let's just discuss if h0 accept that means all this cotton strength is the same or are the same and the more cotton strength you add the higher the price since statistically ANOVA says all cotton percentage are the same or having the same strength it doesn't matter wherever you choose the strength will be the same to cut cost you will always choose the least amount of cotton why because there's the least amount of money spent to make the shirt 15 percentage will be the best if h0 is accepted okay now this case h1 is accepted take a look at this slide we call this as the estimates of the overall means and the treatment effects what you need to do is here you can see i'm going to increase this slide right we name them tau for these treatments right treatments or the level this is for 15 20 25 30 35 percentage right so what is or what are these these are the average that you have found from the table uh, previous table the runs table right and this one this is the average of the average so whatever you get here 9.1 9.8 15.4 17.6 21.6 and 80 10.8 you plus them you divide by five you'll get 15.04 so these fair average change color you minus them so 9.8 minus 15.04 15.4 minus 15.04 so on and so forth and you get these results these are important okay let me make a note on the other side here sorry sorry why these are important okay these are the notes that is important if you see a positive value increase this one for pump rejection positive means good yield if we are talking about cotton strength a positive value means good strength uh, negative value means less yield less strength in this case However, uh, if we talk about reduction of something that you're going to see, okay, never mind, never mind. Cut that. Uh, I'll show them this one later. So, from this positive and negative value, mm -hmm. take a look at this one, these results. Mm -hmm. The first one is for 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. The positive ones are for 20 and for 30 percent just like the graph in the engineering graph just now 30 percent is the best one it is plus and it has the high magnitude 6.56 magnitude which means 30th percentage of cotton is the best what's the next best which is a 20 percent at plus 0 0.38 this is no unit this is dimensionless number okay so the best one is uh 20 percent so let's go back to our uh issue just now we want to cut costs so we want to have a good strength we want to cut costs so the best answer is actually there's a 0 0.36 plus or the 20 percent anyway put 20 percent of cotton in that shirt you have a good strength get a good value go figure all right so which one is the worst you can see there uh, maybe another color 
be black lah. Right, so this one is the uh, no, that's the worst. This one is the worst. Negative five point two four, which is just fifteen percent of cotton. So you don't put fifteen because it's not good, right? Okay, this is only if H one. You know, right here. Except only. Okay. Serious. Serious. Okay. Done. That is for ANOVA 1B. Okay. Any question? Which one is the best? Is the 20 percentage. If um uh, if uh, price is, is in is the issue. Uh let's say this is a good thing. That means you want to have a high strength. Let's see if you want to have other issues, let's say to bring down the uh, dengue virus of course the higher number and positive means the dengue virus going high you want to choose the least amount of dengue virus development so you must choose the least amount of magnitude and a negative value positive and negative is based on your perception if the question wants a positive yield then choose positive value if it must have cost or analysis or what so you choose between all the positive if uh, something reduction, then you choose the negative one. So that's it. That's all. And over one way is very easy, apparently. Okay, down there, you see the confidence interval. Confidence interval, however, must use. You can see here, this 2.08 is actually taken from the t-test. Since f-test is t-test, right? Confidence interval means you must take from the t-test. This is uh, how many degree of freedom? Uh, so you take it from the t test all right what does this means this means take a look at zero uh mu4 which is the 30 percent you can see the minimum amount of strength that you can get from mu4 is 18.95 pound per square inch and the maximum is 24.25 pound per square inch so confidence will give you a range or what is the best or whatever you are looking for all the positive and negative what is the range of that treatment or level okay so these are the um uh, 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 NOVA one way okay so this is the equation confidence interval so you can see here it takes from the uh, t test and this data comes from the f test if you are confused still, we're going to see this in the tutorial sessions. No worries. Right, that's it. So for two ways, I'm going to leave it to the next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on lecture 2.2 and over two ways. Bye. Oh yeah, don't forget to drink tea.